Hong Kong is no longer free. Beijing's new national security law is out, and it's worse than anyone thought. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. July 1st was the 23rd anniversary of the day when the UK handed Hong Kong over to Communist China. And the Chinese Communist Party is celebrating with a national security law that threatens everyone in Hong Kong. Well, it doesn't threaten Chief Executive Carrie Lam. She's doing A-OK. -okay. The Chinese Communist Party had announced in May that they were going to pass a national security law in Hong Kong. But we didn't know at the time what would be in it. Well, now we do. And it's bad. Really bad. For everyone but her. Permanent and non-permanent residents of Hong Kong can now be imprisoned for up to life for crimes of succession, subversion, terrorism and collusion with foreign forces. To enforce the measures, a new security agency has been set up, which isn't under the jurisdiction of local government. It will be the first official presence of mainland security and intelligence agents, whose powers will go beyond local laws. It also allows for serious and complex cases to go to mainland courts. Okay, so there are going to be Chinese security agents and spies based in Hong Kong. Well, they were always in Hong Kong, but now they're official. And they can arrest people and send them to mainland China for trial, where they will be convicted since courts in China have a 99.9% .9 conviction rate. And they could go to prison for the rest of their lives. Oh, and even in Hong Kong, there can be secret trials without juries, and with judges handpicked by the chief executive. Uh, Shelley, I know we don't usually do these for China Uncensored, but I really need a mental health break right now. Puppies! Yes! Puppies! I hope you enjoyed the puppies, because the security law gets way worse. Article 38 of the new law also purports to apply to offenses committed outside of Hong Kong, by non-residents of Hong Kong, and this likely includes Americans. This is outrageous and an affront to all nations. Yes, according to Article 38, this law applies to anyone anywhere in the world. I mean, technically, they're saying it applies to anywhere outside Hong Kong. So I'm pretty sure it even applies on Mars. Watch out, Marvin. Zhang Xiaoming from Beijing's Hong Kong and Macau Affairs Office said, the law is a birthday gift to Hong Kong. That's ridiculous. It's also a birthday gift to everyone outside Hong Kong. And that includes me. It appears even I could be punished under this new law if I go back to Hong Kong. But my being arrested isn't the reason I don't plan on going back. The real danger is that anyone I come in contact with in Hong Kong could be accused of colluding with foreign forces. For example, according to Article 29 of the National Security Law, anyone who conspires with foreigners to provoke hatred of the Chinese government or the authorities in Hong Kong could have committed a criminal offense. Now, I don't actually provoke hatred of the Chinese government, but that's probably not how the Chinese government sees it. According to China law expert Donald Clark, if you've ever said anything that might offend the PRC or Hong Kong authorities, stay out of Hong Kong. And I believe that over the past eight years, I might have said a few things that offend PRC and Hong Kong authorities. The definition of the crimes, separatism, subversion, terrorism, all of these things um, are still, in, in our view, open to abuse by the authorities and, and could possibly be used to punish people for things that should be uh, protected activities, particularly things related to freedom of expression, uh, freedom of, of peaceful assembly, that type of thing. I mean, sure, this sounds bad, but hey, North Korea has praised the Hong Kong security law, so how bad could it be? Actually, I think Pompeo said it best. Free Hong Kong was one of the world's most stable, prosperous, and dynamic cities. Now. Now it will be just another communist-run city where its people will be subject to the party elite's whims. It's sad. Yes, it is sad. 
And it's sad that so many politicians and corporations have made it possible by supporting the rise of the Chinese Communist Party. Shelly, I need another mental health break. Ah, oh, look at that little guy. Well, I, I feel better. Now, every year on July 1st, the anniversary of the handover, there have been demonstrations against the Chinese Communist Party. We were there last year, and this is what it looked like. Sure, there were 5,000 riot police, but back in those days, just 12 months ago, they actually exercised a bit of restraint, comparatively. This year, however, Hong Kong authorities kicked it up a notch. A very large notch. Hong Kong police arrested more than 300 people on Wednesday as protesters took to the streets in defiance of sweeping security legislation introduced by China. Police fired pepper pellets before arresting protesters inside and outside the luxurious Times Square shopping mall. Police said they had made more than 300 arrests for illegal assembly and other offences, with nine involving suspected violations of the new law. Earlier on Wednesday, water cannon was fired and riot police used pepper spray on protesters and press at close range. Hong Kong police were even armed with this brand new fancy purple banner. It warns people that displaying banners or shouting slogans might be a crime under the national security law. So these heaven destroys the Chinese Communist Party posters from earlier this year might not be such a good idea anymore. But even though I am completely crushed by this, Hong Kongers are still managing to protest with their usual dry wit and humor. You guys really are something. For instance, this was the very first person to be arrested under the national security law. He had a Hong Kong independence flag. But wait, if you look very carefully, he wrote a tiny Bu Yao, or I don't want in Chinese and a tiny no to in English. And is saying no to Hong Kong independence a crime? Here's another one. Graffiti that says, arise ye who would not be slaves. That's not subversive. It's the first line of the Chinese national anthem. And in Hong Kong, it's now illegal to insult the national anthem. So they're just being patriotic. For the most part, the international community has been very unhappy about the national security law. The Trump administration is rolling back Hong Kong's trade privileges with the United States. They're also imposing visa restrictions on Chinese officials. Congress has unanimously passed the Hong Kong Autonomy Act. It sanctions Chinese officials responsible for undermining Hong Kong's freedoms and also sanctions banks that do business with those officials. The UK is now officially offering a path to citizenship for 3 million Hong Kongers. And Taiwan has opened a government office to help people fleeing Hong Kong. But meanwhile, things are looking bleak in Hong Kong. According to the New York Times, a museum that commemorates the 1989 Tiananmen Square massacre is rushing to digitize its archives, afraid its artifacts could be seized. Booksellers are nervously eyeing customers worried they could be government spies. Writers have asked a news site to delete more than 100 articles, anxious that old posts could be used against them. And remember activist Joshua Wong, who uh, has totally never interacted with hostile foreign forces before? Well, just hours after the security law was passed, he and other prominent activists resigned from the pro-democracy group Democisto. And then Democisto disbanded entirely. I will probably be the prime target of the new law. But what makes me fear is not my potential imprisonment, but the gloomy fact that the new law will be the threat over the city's future. And now, despite Carrie Lam's assurances that the security law would not affect Hong Kong's freedoms, the Hong Kong government has now declared that one of the most popular protest slogans is pro-independence, secessionist, and subversive, and thus, criminalized. The slogan, Liberate Hong Kong, Revolution of Our Times, has been shouted at pretty much every protest for the past year. It's even appeared in Iceland, which has now broken the national security law. Yes, the entire country. So the Chinese Communist Party is doing its best to strangle Hong Kong. 
But Hong Kongers aren't done fighting yet, and it's a dangerous road ahead. <sighs> you know, before we finish this episode, I think we need one more mental health break. Maybe not a puppy this time. Shelly? Shelly, I, I don't like this. Stop. Stop it! Let's just stick to puppies. Now normally, this would be the time I'd answer a question from one of you who supports the show on the crowdfunding website Patreon. YouTube usually demonetizes episodes about Hong Kong. It's part of that whole Western world supporting the rise of the Chinese Communist Party thing. But I think for this episode, I'm going to ask you to do something instead. Make your voice heard. Let the world know you support Hong Kong. Contact your elected officials and your local newspapers. Put up a Liberate Hong Kong sign. Tell everyone you know about what the Chinese Communist Party is doing. And when companies show they're more interested in Chinese money than human rights, boycott them. And tell them you're boycotting them. No matter where you are, you might end up breaking Hong Kong's national security law. So let's all break the law together. That's what makes it fun. Share your ideas in the comments below. In Hong Kong, Gayo.